Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, the first episode of Brews and Barbells. I am your host, Mike Alferi. And alongside I am... me, I have Nick Elia, my co host. Yep. Howdy, everybody. <sighs> okay. First, first poll done. Topic we're going to be discussing is how does an athletic background benefit? powerlifting performance so um i'll talk real quick about my background i did just about everything as a kid um around the neighborhood had a lot of athletic friends whether i was playing baseball um basketball on the street um doing swimming my whole life as well as ice skating uh dabbled in a little hockey and uh ultimately was doing track cross country swimming um, for years and years, double workouts, a lot of uh, different coaching styles, a lot of good coaches and a lot of half-assed coaches that kind of just showed up for a paycheck. But I'm sure that's, that's pretty true with uh, most, most people, but those few coaches that you had um, kind of stick with you. And I'm, I'm still in contact with a handful of my old coaches who keep up with some of my powerlifting Um and, you know, just in, enjoy seeing me do uh, different things at a high level as well. So, Mike. So, yeah, I uh, grew up playing um, main sports, you know, baseball, football, basketball. I uh, stopped playing basketball when I entered high school. And um, I was really huge on football. And, uh, you know, football has a lot of lifting, a part of it. So I grew up lifting weights eventually when I got into high school. Um, but yeah, played a lot of sports, grew up playing sports, my whole family's athletic and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, having, having, uh, athletic families always a huge benefit. Um, just kind of competitive nature growing up with that. I think that goes a long way, uh, especially with some people I see in the gym and some people I know who, don't really have that competitive nature, um, kind of hone into it later in life or honestly just don't even have it clicked yet. And they're kind of just going through the motions. Um, so I think sports is really important, especially from a young age and the benefit that you get from that kind of just, um, you know, going over basics, just your motor pattern, how you move, how you orient, uh, your body, what your strengths and weaknesses are. And, you know, for sure, just getting stronger with your body weight, um, doing different drills, warm up drills, you learn a lot of things. And I still apply that uh, to my powerlifting. Some of the stick mobility stuff I got from my uh, longtime coach, John Fagan from Gilmore, who um, was really big into, into weight training. And that was kind of when I was introduced to lifting in a, in a good manner and, and good habits. He taught us how to, to, hang clean, uh, bench, squat, deadlift with good form. And I kind of had that in high school as well. I did a, you know, like plyometrics classes. You had to take PE every year, even if you were an athlete um, at really? NECO. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Every year. But it was fun because we'd do like dumb shit and all of us would just, and shit. Yeah, we yeah. just fuck around. Um, but we did have like some lifting class and it was, it was decent. But today I see plenty of people with, with bad habits um, you know, they're like, Oh, this is what I learned from my strength coach. Oh, this is what I did in football. Mm -hmm. And you know, you got knee injuries, you got shoulder injuries, kind of just poor habits that you have to unlearn. Um, and you know, my buddy George was like, Hey, my shoulder hurts. Um, you know, doing this, this shoulder pressing and, and raises and stuff. And I'm like, okay, just, you know, go ahead and, and humor me, just do it. And let me see what's up. And he started doing it. And I was like, immediately just kind of shook my head and I was like, Oh, he's like, yeah, I didn't know any better. You know what I mean? That's, that's all he ever knew. That's what he was shown. So, um, kind of refining those bad habits and doing things the right way. It's difficult, but it's not, it's not impossible. And I think, especially with like the general population people that, um, you know, I see or sometimes coach back in the day at, um, the Lyndhurst YMCA where I was personal training at, I would get a spread of people from, you know, age 17 to, to 70 
and some of the best people were always the athletes. They they always did um, multi sports. They were always coached. Yeah, they so were always coached by people. Yeah. They're very coachable. They they listen and respect you, um, and they were just they you know kind of grinders too. Yeah, like you already they already came in knowing some of the movements that you were giving them, so it made it a lot easier. But back to like competitive competitiveness, um, growing up competing, it makes you want to compete. Like after you're done with those team sports. And that's why powerlifting was amazing. Um, yeah, when I first started powerlifting, it wasn't really powerlifting. Like, I was just being coached to lift heavy, I guess, um, by uh, Dylan Aquila. He knows a lot. He's a smart kid. And um, but then I eventually transitioned over to you to focus more on powerlifting in depth. But uh, definitely helped a lot. I learned yeah. a lot from him. And um, in high school, I did not learn a lot. From my strength coach, he was terrible. He didn't know anything. He uh, <laughs> gave us th the weirdest type of volume work ever, and uh, none of it made sense. But but cool. eventually you grow out of it. Eventually you learn more and more as you get older, and uh, definitely helps. Uh -huh. But what's what's interesting is that sometimes, like you can do things wrong. And you'll still make gains, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Like the yeah. newbie gains. Like the newbie gains, and Anyone if you're if you're consistent, and you at least do the the foundational just basics that never go away. Just if you eat exactly. enough, if you sleep enough, if you train hard enough, you can make gains. And then you know the argument comes: let's do less and get more. You know mm -hmm. the specificity of of powerlifting and what you're doing with volume with. Um, kind of these macro cycles these handful of three-week block increments um and kind of just end goals like that so you can half-ass things for sure in the beginning like not knowing too much but if you're consistent um You'll and enjoy progress. it then you know yeah you're gonna make gains even even i dare say on cookie cutter programs facts, facts. you know like yeah. uh for example like the ones I, I against my, <laughs> my guys <laughs> <laughs> you guys didn't know uh, cookie cutter, uh, <laughs> cutter coach. Yeah, big, big time cookie cutter coach. Um, I ran a program off of Reddit for like a year and a half that I got from my friend Dino and Jason um, at OSF when I when I joined over from the YMCA, mm. and I ran that for literally a year and a half, and it was honestly a lifestyle. Like it was, I know Vic Vic Luffy did it as well. Um, it's kind of just a scheme of of five three, um, one, That's like what that. I followed too. That scheme which works for a well. Long time. And you kind of, I just did the, I did squat bench deadlift six days on, one day off. I was doing, you know, two days of bench, two yeah. days of bench, two days of deadlift, two days of squats, and it was all like hard training. Like, yeah. And every every day was, you know, we had like the leg day, the back day. It wasn't segmented as well as, um, you know, what we do now. Mm -hmm. So the I I honestly probably wasn't recovering too too uh too well compared to how I am now. Um, but I was definitely pushing movements hard, and I was definitely getting stronger and stronger every single fucking week. Exactly. No matter what. Um, so it's kind of kind of a good gut check to to fuck up and do your own thing for a while, and kind of get a better understanding of oh I respond well to volume or oh I. You know, I can get away with doing a little bit less of this, and I'll, and I have to do more of more of that. Yeah. Um. And I think that that for sure shows when when I do a screening process of of if I'm going to coach somebody or not, and they reach out to me. Um. You know, I ask them ten questions of what type of lifter they are, strength, weaknesses, what they kind of are familiar with, and and it's always good to get newbie people because they don't have you know, these poor habits formed from their high school strength coaches exactly. or whatever they learned. But in the same token, they also don't have kind of just like a foundational strength that I think um, a lot of athletes, especially footballers, have. A lot of footballers are, are really strong and maybe not technically sound, but, yeah. you know, it just – that's what they know. They're like, oh, yeah, we're just going to push some weight. And I think you're a really good example of that. Yeah. It's like, uh. you know, my sumo doesn't look like Mike's sumo, but, shit, he could – he could probably go toe to toe on a on a sumo deadlift with me. Same thing with conventional, just being strong overall and having that. Yeah, being a being a corn fed motherfucker um, always helps. That brings me up to uh, one of our <laughs> assistant coaches in football. 
there were some days where we would go into a workout and he would be like, all right, bench, throw 315 on the bar, have two side spotters, <laughs> do it for as many reps as you can. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> so that's just how we were like, that's how we grew up, how our coach trained us. And it was absurd, but I mean, I guess it showed in the end. Yeah. Like those newbie gains will always show until you eventually plateau. You got to, you got to figure else something else out. You know? Yeah. And, and that's the thing about the repetition and strength training can absolutely get boring and, and just very redundant, mm -hmm. but that's, that's the name of the game. It's like, if you look at longevity and, and people like my coach, uh, Cashmere Hughes, mm -hmm. he's been powerlifting for, for a while. And, and, you know, now he's like considered a sub master, right. Mm -hmm. Cause he's like in his middle thirties. Um, and he That's just, crazy. he just hangs around. He's always been around. He's always competitive and he always does well. And I mean, he's got a crazy fucking dots pound for pound. He's one of the best, obviously, um, mm -hmm. in the country. And he started, you know, his powerlifting journey late, but it doesn't matter. Like, Dude, I've seen 65 years start. <laughs> yeah. Um, you could and, start powerlifting whenever you want. People are just scared of that. Cash is a hyper athlete. Anybody who knows Cash knows he's a hyper athlete. I've and that, seen videos. Yeah, that relates back to just like, you know, our topic here, of the athleticism. Cash will fucking dunk on you. He will cross <laughs> you up. He can, you know, swish a three. He will out sprint you like. I mean, we wrestled and, you know, obviously I got plenty of pounds on him and I'm, I'm shorter, but it doesn't matter. Dude's got crazy strong legs, strong upper body. And, you know, we just went at it and he fucking tossed me and he's just, he's just like, he's literally like he, that. He's like that. <laughs> like the athleticism. It's just, it's awesome. There's a lot of young athletes that, that are like that same thing. You see them like, and you just go, damn, like that's a dangerous that's a dangerous kid. And like, like even he's us. he's got that foundational strength. He, if he just focuses, if he or she just focuses, then you know you you got a lot to work with. Yeah, like earlier this week, we were like, "Fuck it, let's race." And we're like, <laughs> "Whoa, we're still fast." Like even though we've been powerlifting, training powerlifting for the past few years. Yeah, it's like even, wow. Even it, it's just like muscle memory. Like you're always going to be athletic unless you somehow grow an absurd amount of weight. And, <laughs> Even Mo was surprised. Yeah. He was like, "Dang, I didn't, I didn't know you guys would move like that." Like, you know, that's randomly yeah. on a Monday night after a bunch of of squats and and lower quad work. Yeah, and, that, and Mo's a uh, trainer at the gym we lift at. Yeah, great dude, for sure. Yeah, but he trains mainly athletes and uh, a lot of people. So, yeah, yeah it's always it. it's always fun to see some of the things he's doing with his athletes and and with bands and you know plyometrics, explosive stuff. And that kind of just like gets me kind of, I kind of miss it. And I'm like, mm. yep. you know, I kind of miss doing these drills, these track and field drills and grapevine and, and just moving and, and doing different things. And, you know, instead of moving just in this plane of straight up and down vertically, moving exactly. horizontally, twisting, turning, it's, it's just a good change up. Um, and I don't think anybody should get away with that. Anybody should get away from that. Um, you know, just based on it only benefits. You. Yeah. If you're, if you're a general population, like you still should be doing some type of strength training because if you're weak in any way, it's, it's just going to be detrimental to your health. Exactly. Um, and I think lifelong athletes are always like that. You know, that's why, that's why I picked up powerlifting because when I was after freshman year of college at mountain union and I didn't want to, I wanted to transfer. So I transferred to JCU and, you know, I, I just started lifting. We were lifting in, um, you know, the rec center for swimming. And I was like, oh, I can, I can bench 225. Yeah. Like I didn't, it wasn't really, I don't know. It wasn't like a big milestone that I focused on. I was like, oh, I want to bench 225. I mean, I was doing like 155, 165, 185 for reps and stuff and kind of just jumped into it. Um, yeah. You know, you get stronger without necessarily focusing on a specific number. Um, I was like, hey, you know what? getting stronger is fun and doing it, you know, specifically for the strength output of it, as opposed to a swimming benefit. That's what really caught my attention. I was like, I want to do my own thing. I want to become certified as my, as a personal trainer and, and, you know, finally be a coach to myself and others. Cause I had so many coaches and 
Exactly. I, I needed something different, but, you know, once a competitor, always a competitor, I needed to do something. So when Frank, you know, uh, introduced me to OSF and was like, hey, you know, we got this powerlifting competition. It's not sanctioned by any federation, but it's just going to be a fun time. Um, yeah, 50, my old coach competed in that. Yeah, 50 buck buy in, mm -hmm. you know, and you just squat bench deadlift and they load exactly. up the plates. So it was, it was a fun time. Um, that was your first ever? Well, yeah, yeah like first that. ever, really. But it wasn't, you know, it was unofficial. But yeah. I was like, I think 100, I weighed in at 173 or 175. And I I squatted 420. Mm -hmm. And it was really easy. Like, I didn't know what jumps to make. I never squatted 400 before that, it was anyways. A learning experience, yeah. Yeah, it was fun. So I'm like, I thought it was a funny number. She was like, oh, 420. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put that in there. <laughs> so I smoked that. I sank it. And back in the day, I used to like look up during squats. It, was, it wasn't an ugly squat, but it's definitely not how I squat now. Yeah, exactly. um, and then I benched 292 or 295, which is actually pretty solid. I played it conservative. I was like, oh, should I bench 300? Like, Fuck it. I'll take, I'll take a smarter call. And then deadlifted. Oh, my sumo deadlift was like fucking ugly. Oh, five hundred. It, it was so was funny. Disgusting. Like my back, my back rounded a good bit. Yeah. Uh, my mobility was hilarious. Like, and I no mixed gripped it. Yeah, sure. no hip mobility. Mixed gripped it, <laughs> and I just, I just kind of gripped and ripped. Exactly. And uh, yeah, it, it looks funny. You can go back to that post. It's still up. Yeah. Um, but it just goes to show, like, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Exactly. I was just having fun, and, and you can you can do really well just going out like that. Yeah. And that's what I, I, The first meet I did was, like, a push-pull thing that my old gym held, uh, Iron Athlete, owned by Brian Doberdruck. Great dude also. He's a sponsored elite FCS athlete. Um, that's badass. Yeah, he's, he's an awesome dude. But uh, we did a push-pull meet, which is bench and deadlift. And this is when I first, like, dropped 40 pounds. I used to weigh, like, 240 at peak. Dropped 40 pounds, competed at 198 against my one of my best friends, uh, Christian German. And uh, <laughs> I went there, went in there with the ugliest sumo pool. <laughs> but I pulled 585 <laughs> out of nowhere. This was after a 40-pound cut. Six plates, just like, what the fuck? Exactly. And I benched uh. 365, but they were both unofficial. And, um, yeah, it was... It was definitely an interesting experience, um, but it was definitely fun, you know, doing that first kind of like competition in lifting. But <laughs> that brings us back to we did like a mock meet like five months prior. I was probably around like 230. I pulled 605 <laughs> and I was humping the shit out of that bar. <laughs> Just anything, to, anything I could do to get that bar up, but it, it, it was fun. Humping the bar. Oh, Where dude, have we seen that? Hitch oh, I've seen that plenty of times. <laughs> With people doing it with 405, too, it's kind of whack. Yeah. But. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting. Uh, but still, like, your fucking, your technique was fucking awful, but it didn't oh, matter. Yeah. I just had the that core strength that you get when you first start lifting. Yeah. That football fucking exactly. corn-fed Kirtland. Exactly. Strength. <laughs> yep. Um, so that's, that's great. But then you're like, you know what? I remember you told me you weren't going to compete when mm -hmm. we first like kind of met. I was, I was getting a, I was getting a feeler for who Mike Mike is. I'm like, I don't know if I, I don't yeah, know I if I like this dude or not. At that time, I was like, <laughs> you know what? I was throwing up muscle ups and I was training a lot of volume. I was still doing barbell movements. It was like I was just having fun at that point, you know. Yeah, but and then, then so you transferred, kind of transferred over to OSF. And then, you know, as a competitor, you're like, I need to do something. Yeah, this was right after I started, like, I did, like, two months of Muay Thai training. And I missed lifting too much. So, I'm like, wow, I just need some something to compete in. Yeah. So I started powerlifting. And That's... Um, I saw what you guys were doing over there, and I was like, this is sick. Signed up for the first official meet. And, um, Yeah. And yeah. once you do your first meet, you don't really go back. Oh, you You're get like, addicted. This is fun. After that, I would do that. I was so like excited, happy after that first meet. I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> I I signed up right after that meet, and then yeah, you, you know, did. Chico decided to be a predator. So yeah, that was pulled out that's of that. Fucked so up. Now we're doing the uh, OSF one. R.I.P. the to the USBA. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> but what are you gonna do? Yeah. Once I stopped swimming, I was like. I need I need to do something. I need to go against other people. I need a challenge. Uh, 
<laughs> and that's just that's just how it goes. That's yeah. the that's the athlete in you. It never goes away. Exactly. Um, my parents are the same way, especially my dad. Like he's still he's sixty four, and he still goes to you know like he'll kayak eight miles, do a kayak race every year in Manaway. He'll do the lighthouse triathlon at uh, Fairport Harbor. Yeah, and. You know, if he's not winning, like he's having a bad fucking time. Exactly. Like, that's just, nice. like, that's it's how nice it is. When you have like, parents that oh, compete. I, yeah, like I got beat. I got beat. I got second place. Some some fucker beat me, and I'm like, well, dad, like, I mean, you know better. Exactly. <laughs> you gotta. You, like if you, you gotta do more. If you have parents that both were athletes growing up, it just makes it so much easier for you to be an athlete. Um, like you're most most likely to become an athlete if your parents both grew up being athletes. Like same with my parents. My mom plays volleyball pretty much all year round. My dad plays basketball a lot. He likes doing fun stuff, so. But being athletic definitely helps in powerlifting, for sure. Yeah. It keeps you sharp, keeps you keeps you entertained, and uh, so that's that, that brought us here, which is good. And, and also the team camaraderie, like, even though powerlifting is – you can't compare it to, you know, basketball or you can't mm-hmm. compare it to football – you know, it's an individual sport at the end of the day. Yeah, like nobody's nobody's doing anything for you. There's exactly. no there's no team. You know, there are team scores at, yeah. at like USPA Nationals when you when you combine them and stuff. But but it's all based on how those yeah. individuals do. How well you perform. Exactly. So it's fun to take an individual sport and see you know all these teams develop and coaches kind of build a whole a whole team of you know guys and girls congruently that just get along, have fun, kind of butt heads too, mm-hmm. challenge each other, talk shit, um, you know, in good ways to teammates and stuff like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to chip you in the next competition. If, if you're close. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so it's <laughs> Donnie. Nick's dog loves me. He's here with us. Say hi, Donnie. Yeah. <laughs> you trying to help you? Don't. Don't do that. You're good. He doesn't know your dog is a boy. Chill, chill, chill. Dumbass. I'm going to put you in the car, bud. Chill out. But yeah, no, powerlifting is <laughs> definitely fun. And uh, I've, I've met some great people when I first started, especially at OSF. All my friends are from OSF. They all powerlift. And um, I basically hang out with all of them now, you know. Yeah, and then and then we started going, you know, doing things, <laughs> doing things outside of the gym, you know, going to downtown Willoughby, um, and that'll be another topic we talk about yeah. social life, um, you Getting know, maybe boozing outside of, of the, <laughs> maybe <laughs> boozing outside of the gym, uh, how that affects training and and there's benefits, pros and cons, psychologically, psychologically it's good. Um, to get away from lifting the stress and just have fun, you know, everything in moderation. You don't have to be fucking crazy strict um, exactly. and annoying and be, you know, oh, I, I cannot, I can't drink or smoke or, <laughs> or anything like that. Um, so that's another episode. Yeah. So we'll, we'll pocket that. Hey, you guys have a great day. Um, thanks for joining us. It's your host, Michael Ferry. And your other co-host, Nikolai. Enjoy. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Tune in next week to uh, listen to uh, us speak with Jack O'Donnell. Yes. Our good buddy on episode two of Bruising Barbells. Jack (laughs) O.D. Cheers. (laughs) Cheers.